Welcome to the Futurum Group Tech Webcast. I am here in Vegas with my folks from Veritas, and I want to welcome Simon Jelly, who is the VP and GM for Data Protection and all the SaaS products, right? Is That's that right? right, yeah. Nice to, uh, nice to meet you, Kimberly. Great. And I've got Chris Weiber, who is the VP of Product Marketing there at Veritas. Welcome. Great to be here. And we are live here at AWS in Vegas, AWS reInvent at Vegas. Um, of course, we're not live on the show floor, but we're here at the conference here. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is really, I think, is a bit of the, the vision that you guys all have with data protection, cybersecurity, and all those things. And kind of as a little background of it, you know, our group has spent quite a bit of time with IT end users, and I think you guys know that. Um, Data protection, data security, cybersecurity, this has all gotten super complex. I can't believe it, how, how complex it is. And it's, it's to the point now, you know, the complexity is there because we're in, all these guys are in at least two clouds. They're on premise. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with um, lots of governance issues. The attack surfaces have spread all over the place. Um, so, and it's, it's, we just kind of keep on trying, the ball keeps on kicking down because the guys get smarter with what they're doing and we get smarter with what we're doing and they get smarter and, and here we are. Um, still trying to figure out how do we protect the data and really recover the data. Mm -hmm. So with that, I wanna to go to my first question with you guys. Um, Veritas has been on the forefront of data protection. You've also been on the forefront of recovery and Lordy, I know. Um, I was there with 9-11. So, um, and everything that you guys did to take care of your customers. What I'd like to do is have it in your perspective. Why is recovery so difficult? Why is it so complex? Take it away. Yeah, I, I, th I think you hit on it in some, some level in your intro uh, there, Kimberly. Uh, once upon a time, not so long ago, and this is how most people got to know Veritas, right? It was about recovering from things like uh, executives fat fingering and deleting files, or maybe a flood or you know, people would imagine a meteor strike, right? And, and those events, while disasters at some level, were easier to anticipate, right? You, you know what you need to do to recover from a flood. Uh, you know how to do it, mopping it up and so on. Well, fast forward to today. Not only has the uh, place in which people store data exploded, it's not just one data center or maybe two, it's that plus a bunch of clouds, SaaS, we'll talk about that more, and, and then it's also the type of attacks coming at you, the disasters, if you will, aren't, aren't just natural disasters. They're human and AI driven, right? So the bad actors are out there, not only coming at you, but having to make you adapt to their tactics as they do one thing and we get better at solving that and they do another thing. You have to keep up, it's sort of an arms race. Uh, and, and then beyond that, when you do get attacked, uh, and m most people it's a when, not an if anymore, right? Uh, it's a coordination of a bunch of teams. It's not just that IT admin that has the five hour RTO. Remember how easy that was? Like, let's just bring the data back. Boom, put it right back where it used to be. Well, you can't do that in a cyber attack. Uh, and so it's a lot of different people, different tools, expanded attack surface, and, and an, an enemy, really, that's adaptive. So it's just gotten a lot harder, more complicated. Different people using different tools, different cultures between IT organizations, right? Do, do the SecOps team and the IT ops team know each other? Maybe. Uh, and so there's a lot of talk about you know, DevSecOps, but like finding those individuals that do all three, those people are unicorns. Well, and then I would add in the other piece. Yeah. Do the cloud ops people absolutely actually right. know the on-premises ops That's right. people when you've got data around there? Yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So I see the headline that you had down on the show floor is it says, um, ransomware fears Veritas. That was a quote. So that's, what's this that's marketing, by the way. <laughs> that, okay, so we're right blaming job. you. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you you got to come up with something that grabs people's attention and creates a memorable moment. You know, they right? fear Veritas. Okay, there we go. So what is the strategy? You know, um, what are you doing to assist customers to combat this the ransomware issues? I, I know you've got broad kind of tools there, but when did you take it? Away? Well, so, so I think you know, the, the thing that we're bringing together is really what the heritage to some degree and also the secret source that maybe we haven't broadcast as readily previously in Veritas. And that is one, doing what we've always known for, data protection, right? That's our legacy, that's what we've been known for uh, for many years, but bringing new techniques, AI, ML into that in terms of bringing not just cyber recovery, but cyber preparedness as well, right? Detecting the threats through the backup data, through that shadow data we ultimately have of all of the Fortune 100's uh, primary enterprise data. 
but putting that together with our data governance and also data resiliency capabilities. There may be things that people don't know us so well for, um, but we have deep heritage again in helping customers really drive governance of their data and also make sure they can very resiliently recover and disaster recovery that data overall. Um, I think what's key- but, You know, and I'll, I'll stop there for a second yeah, no because problem. you do have, and I, I'm not sure if everybody understands how deep your you have been in compliance. Yeah and Absolutely. governance, it, it is, it's, it's not something that's been added on recently. This right. thing goes back. This is not new, this is not this new This is decades. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to age myself. It's, yeah. I mean, it's a long time, long yeah. time coming. So, so I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, no, needed for, I need to let people know that this was like a new, not a Absolutely. newcomer situation. So I, actually, I joined as part of a, uh, one of our first compliance acquisitions, I joined Veritas back in 1999. So very much appreciate the deep history there. And, and why I reference that is, what we're seeing is this evolution from, as Chris mentioned, the five hour RTO, where you're just looking at that recovery event. That's not straightforward anymore. What you really need to be doing is that cyber recovery preparedness. Because ultimately, organizations, the bad actors are trying to impact and infect your data. So even before you start that recovery window, you really need to understand where is your data? Is it clean in terms of recovery environment that I have? Is there exposure I need to look at publicly as a public company in terms of sharing to my customers, my base Does out there? Does it contain PII, right? right. All, these, all these things that to Simon's point, you need to know and prepare and plan for before anything bad ever happens. And that, that's a great point because one of the things that Randy just got back from doing a, a week long with our with IT clients, and you know the big thing that we one of the big things he was talking about is all the cybersecurity stuff. And the thing that he emphasizes over and over and over again when we're consulting with him is recoverability. Start with recovery. Yeah, yes, prevention is part of it, but you got to. I mean, I start from the top of the stack, right? The recovery. Can you recover? Mm -hmm. And can you? That's, Honestly, that's look at your executives and say, for. absolutely, that's right. yes. That's, that's, that's what the business cares about, right? And that's that's why this whole, uh, how do you deal with ransomware and have resilience against attacks is a board level issue. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So let me go to the next question. Um, cybersecurity is a um, team sport. We, I've heard you say that, yeah. you've seen that as well. Absolutely. Um, we definitely see the CISO and the CIO coming together. So that's one team. We, you know, we're doing tabletops, we're doing planning, we're doing all those things in order to be prepared for recovery kind of ability. But you're taking another level. Um, and you, you say there is no one vendor can actually address all the cybersecurity issues um, and resiliency challenge codes. So you take off with that and give me your perspective on it. Yeah, it's a, it's a great um, great question. I, I firmly believe that solving for things like ransomware has to be a team sport these days. Because look, there's really two sides of things. One is uh, the vendors that are trying to help you prevent an attack. And there are a lot of great ones here at the show, right, that you should go check out down, down on the show floor. And then there's the resiliency side of the coin, right? So how do you, when things do go sideways, because despite all the prevention, we see this in the headline news all the time, it's still happening. And, and so there's really nobody that does both of those things. And so from a Veritas perspective, because we're more on the resilient side of things, we have controls within our own products to make sure we can't be attacked and your data is immutable and isolated and all these good things. But it's the integration with some of our partners that complete um, what we call Veritas 360 Defense. And so we, we announced this recently. It's a combination of what we were just talking about before, what we do around data security, data protection, also the data governance bit um, that give unique capabilities to our customers, but we're not really 360 on our own. We have to partner up with other folks in the cybersecurity space to really give the best solution to our customers. And this is folks like uh, CyberArk, uh, CrowdStrike, uh, and those are well-known known, well known names in, in the industry or in the security side of things. But we're also working with uh, less known vendors like, like Semperis that you may have heard of, a smaller company, um, US-based, uh, founded, uh, and a lot of their engineering is over in Israel. And what they do is they look at uh, how you can prevent uh, malfeasance from getting into your Active Directory forest in a very complex way. So we partner with them to be able to back up what they do with immutability and be able to do things like malware scanning and so on. And then when you're doing your recovery of Active Directory, which by the way is one of the first workloads you typically want to bring back when you're attacked, right? They can also check that like, hey, nobody snuck in there and fiddled some bits around and now suddenly open up bigger holes that create opportunity for more attacks later once you do a restore. Well, and I think the other thing that, uh, the, you know, Simparis is an example of that team sport. 
because what they're really helping you recover is that identity, yep. right? And I obviously data tied to identity is the key, right? That unlocks in terms of that value to the organization. The other things we're doing is not just partnering in terms of we provide those great expertise on the security side with our great expertise on the resiliency, but how do we share those threat patterns, right? How do we correct, help understand correct. we can potentially announce the, the SOC that's being run by your security that, hey, there's weird access patterns happening on the data itself, right? Because backups are becoming an attack vector themselves, right? In terms of if they can get access to that backup data, either to exploit it or to add ransomware signatures there and really damage your recoverability overall. Actually, I just recently saw some data that was coming out. Of, I think it was CISA that was talking about how when they get in, that's the first place they go. Absolutely. Is Absolutely. After the backups, let me lock that down. And I can imagine if I can get after the Active Directory, I can check you guys down for a really long Absolutely. time. Absolutely, you lock out so. identity, right? The data, the, yeah. that's the front door, right, yeah. to the data itself. So, so this goes back even to the complexity question you asked before, right? Um, imagine all the pieces you have to coordinate now. And so this is why working closely with partners uh, is important to us and important to our customers to get a real comprehensive solution in place. It's a team sport yeah. at the end of the day. It's huge. Yeah. So let's talk about um, testing. One of the lesser known capabilities you guys have is something called the Red Lab. Uh, yeah. Um, you can take that one. <laughs> well, let, yeah, let, absolutely. Uh, let me do a quick <laughs> intro, guys. This is what this is. is um, this is a real lab with real malware. We, we don't let that in our, our lab. Sorry, we're not going to let you have that, <laughs> have access idea. to us Good with idea. this. Yeah, yeah. So I'm hopefully you got this well sealed off from the world. But take me through. Let's yeah, take absolutely. the guys so, to the red I mean, lab. You summarized it well. Ultimately, that we want to make sure that we can provide that guarantee to our, the organizations we partner together to protect, that we're doing our utmost to really battleground test the solutions that we're building together. So the Red Lab is built, right, obviously secured from our own networks and making sure we're not exposing ourselves to risk, but we're putting the latest signatures in there with our combined Veritas and our partner solutions are really testing that you know, A, are the detection patterns there as well, but also can we provide that recoverability to a customer? So really it's a way for us to truly battle harden and battle test our solutions together as this Veritas 360 defense and, strategy. And, and, so and I know this question was on there, but you actually going on the dark web and downloading this stuff? Yeah, yeah. That, that's, part, that's part of what the team does is, okay. is you know, there's you know the academics behind how one can do things like anomaly detection. Yeah. But then there's actually putting it in a lab and testing it and yeah. see how it behaves. It's so, another. So the analogy yeah. is like, you know, uh, uh, there's a reason that uh, folks like GM and others uh, put crash test dummies in the cars. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Before they put the cars out on the market. Yeah. And so we're doing the same thing, yeah. basically, but in this case to try and prevent things like ransomware and then learning from it and continually updating our software and making sure we've got validated designs for our integration with partners to help customers deploy and solve the problem. Yeah, the, the other thing that we're building is, look, this is becoming on both sides a game of automation with AI and machine learning as well, right? That's Those techniques are being applied, whether we like it or not, into ransomware attackers. We're responding in the same way. So we're learning, we're using AI and ML within those labs to learn those patterns as well and build automated recovery plans for customers and our partner with our partners as well. It's like it's a new world out there with these guys. Okay, so I'm going to kind of shift here. Um, you guys have been, you all have been doing quite a bit of work in um, as a service, um, bringing solutions out there. One of the big and hybrid cloud technologies. Mm -hmm. we, we've worked with you on some of your Alta launches, your Alta mm -hmm. launch and that sort of thing. One of the areas that you guys, you were not only you're a big sponsor here, but you were a big sponsor there at KubeCon. And so you made a huge investment into this next generation of uh, cloud native areas. So you want to talk about that and where that's going and some of those big investments you've made. Yeah, there. absolutely. I mean, it's been a massive investment for us to take our data protection solutions to what we call cloud scale, mm -hmm. right? And that's really containerizing the core services that we've again been known for for many years around our core protection layers, our policy engines, our uh, deduplication and storage expertise and building that into a containerized architecture uh, that is ready made for uh, environments like AKS with AWS. It's exactly. cloud native basically, right? right? It's, yeah. it's built for the cloud and again that's whether we run it ourselves and we are offering now backup as a service, data protection as a service uh, directly or for customers that want to offer that and run it as a service within their own cloud-based architectures. And again, we partner greatly obviously with AWS but that's available as you mentioned most customers are using two or more clouds. Uh, so again, they're looking to the, how do they deploy those architectures into supporting SaaS, you know, ready-made SaaS applications, but also custom-built uh, as a service applications within their organ own organizations. Yeah, and in that area, that's addressing one of the areas we talk about is complexity, Well, right? it's, it's one of the reasons we're at this show, right? So uh, if you want to take and run 
uh, own, maintain, and operate your own instance of what we do in EKS, have at it, right? We, we can run in that fashion that actually helps dramatically lower your costs uh, because of all the deduplica uh, deduplication technology we have built in that we've had for quite some time. And then because uh, it's not just a lift and shift and like taking a VM architecture and putting it in the cloud, it's actually containerized and, and, uh, and orchestrated via Kubernetes, we, we lower your cost there operationally as well because you'll actually go into like the AWS console and you can see us spin up when we need to and then we'll spin down to other containers when we don't that lowers your compute spend. And so I'm, I'm gonna say this and if we need to, whatever, it's not your daddy's Veritas anymore. <laughs> Uh, well said. Uh, well said. No, absolutely. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's, we have a t shirt like that, by the way. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, last question for both of you What is it that you, Chris, you want them to know yeah. about Veritas that they may not know? I, I, I think you touched on it. I mean, you know, for, for people out there that think you know Veritas, um, you may because we've been around for 30 plus years, right? Uh, and so we've had your back, as it were, in the data center, uh, and that's maybe what you know us for. But if, if you haven't looked closely, you should look again. Because now, and again, this is why we're at AWS, we cover you in cloud, right? Not only can we run natively in the cloud, we can back up all your SaaS workloads, and by the way, and this is important for where we are uh, with reInvent, we can protect um, all your PaaS and your IaaS workloads, so EC2, S3, any flavor, uh, and then all the PaaS workloads, right? Not just one or two, but uh, what we do with Oracle SQL, MySQL, uh, Mariah, uh, I'm leaving something out. Oh. The, yeah, uh, uh, Aurora, right, as well. Uh, Postgres, that's the one. Uh, and then, and then also, this is this is relatively new. Redshift, right? So, so we really cover your data in the cloud, your compute in the cloud, and your storage in the cloud. Um, and so, it's very much the future is cloud, and that that's what the whole Alta launch is about, right. right? You know us in the data center. We can do the same thing for you we do there, but now in the cloud. Simon, you? Well, I, I think put simply, look, if, if enterprise grade cyber resiliency is what you need, come talk to Veritas. Yeah, yeah. Great. Great. Guys, thank you very much. Chris, Simon, I appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Cameron. Great to thank be you. Here. Great to be here. Thank you for joining for the Futurum Tech webcast. We appreciate you tuning in. Mm -hmm.